Good day, friends, and God bless you. I wanted to share a moment with you this week. I hope that uh, these beautiful November days have not been lost on you, uh, no matter what may be going on in life in general or specifically. We have had some gorgeous days in God's creation. I wanted to share with you a text, and last Sunday, many of you know, we observed All Saints Sunday, as many churches did, uh, and it is always a meaningful day. And one of the texts for All Saints, in fact, it pops up at different times, is from the prophet Isaiah in the book of Isaiah. And it's a vision, uh, Isaiah's vision of, you might say, the great banquet, the homecoming banquet of the Lord on the Lord's mountain. I want to share with you three verses and then a, and then a thought today and a prayer. We looked at Isaiah 25, uh, beginning with verse 16, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a, ri a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, and he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of God. Thanks be to God. And so... All Saints Day, we typically, uh, during the service, read a list of names of church members who have gone on to be with the Lord sometime during the previous year, since the last All Saints Sunday. And that's sometimes a bittersweet experience, needless to say. We also are, are encouraged to bring to mind all, all of the brothers and sisters who've gone before and yet who are yet with us today who are all part of this communion we call the communion of saints that is brought into being only by God, this, uh, this fellowship that we enjoy. So, you know, you, you can go through All Saints Day with different kind of emotions. Sometimes, just like when you lose a loved one, you have unresolved parts uh, of, of yourself, uh, of your relationships, some of them unspoken. You might have some bitter grief from being separated from your loved one uh, or just the wrenching longing, you know, to one day, one day be together again. Uh, the hope for that. All of those things may well up. And so we, we look with special attention to Isaiah's words about the mountain of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord where all peoples will gather for, uh, at the feast and the shadows around us and the divisions that, you know, that divide us uh, will, will dissipate. And disgrace and sorrow and even death will vanish. Well, that points almost directly to the teachings of Jesus and his parables of the kingdom. And what we might expect to await us. All who love the Lord, who seek, seek his face, his truth, his way who want to be and long to be with him. Uh, I think that's the great living hope and the yearning of our hearts that we want to be attentive to, that we want to acknowledge, and we want to do that, I would say, primarily in worship, in worship with one another, just as we did last All Saints, and will again soon, again, in our, our regular schedule of worship, but also in a personal relationship that we have with God in Christ. You know, it's not just a matter of saying our prayers daily. I'm, you know, Lord, please help this person. Please be with this person, although that's very important. But it's all about cultivating that kind of relationship with God. I mean, uh, regularly, candidly, lovingly. What prevents us from doing that? It's what we're invited to know and to enjoy and to be a part of. And I believe the connection of living uh, of in relationship with the living God now puts us right in line with the living hope of the vision of Isaiah. And really for all of God's people who have, who have gone before us and who are still present with us. 
All our petty squabbles, our transgressions, our, you know, will be reversed in that moment of feasting and of rejoicing. And we will acknowledge, as Isaiah says, this is our God. Oh, what a day that will be. Huh? What a glorious day, as the old song says. I'd like to end today with uh, a, a prayer. It's by Dr. Walter Brueggemann, but it made me think about all saints and also about our relationship with God. Uh, that He kind of titled the prayer, Give Us Appropriate Yielding, O Lord. Will you pray with me? God of our mothers and fathers, long gone, gone and treasured, God of our grandchildren yet to be and awaited, God of our years, our days, and even this moment. Our lives are deeply rooted in miracles before us. Our faith is richly set in courage, running thick. Our vocation is shaped by all those who have risked for your purposes. And now, in our remembering, we are made mindful of our own place of call and our own time of obedience. We pray for ourselves and for your whole church. Courage beyond our easier timidity. Vision beyond our present tense. Restlessness beyond our ready settlements. And yielding beyond our will to manage. Give us appropriate yielding that we may be like our remembered ones in freedom and in love for you. We pray in the name of Jesus, whom we remember until he comes again. Amen. The Lord be with you and bless you. We'll see you next time.